Whenever we set out to learn something, our brain automatically tries to take what it assumes to be the easiest path. We naturally navigate towards what we take to be the easiest way to accomplish any given task. But what may seem to be the easiest way might not actually be the best one. And what if it were actually impeding our progress in the long run? When learning a piano piece, the easiest path is to learn with our fingers. If we repeat a sequence of movements hundreds or even thousands of times, whatever it takes to learn it, we do tend to remember it. In other words, we learn a series of key presses. And then when we do so, we rely on muscle memory. This is more accurately called motor memory. Motor memory may be the most important kind of musical memory when preparing for any kind of performance, but it's not the only one. If we rely ex exclusively on motor memory, our musical memories often fail us right when we need them the most, namely when we're on the spot in a performance situation. Our attempt to learn music in the easiest possible way might actually be hampering our progress. To learn music more effectively, we need to give not just our fingers, but also our minds a workout. One way to achieve this is by challenging ourselves to learn music by ear. The more we're able to translate the music we hear in our minds to the keyboard, the more secure our playing will be. Luckily for us, this skill is in fact learnable. So what is ear training? Ear training is kind of like the listening comprehension of music because it can be challenging to train systematically and because instrumental teachers have to accomplish so much in little lesson time, it tends to get neglected in music training. Many teachers of classical music never systematically train the ear at all, and instead they focus on reading music and on instrumental technique, which are admittedly themselves very broad skill sets that do take years of training to master, so it's certainly understandable. Ear training really deserves to be given similar attention to music training. Just as a painter needs to develop acute visual perception, and a chef has to develop refined culinary taste, so should musicians develop aural sensitivity. Ear training is really a set of aural skills. These skills may be thought of as stages of ear training. The first stage is learning to hear ourselves as we really sound. This is already a major task. The next stage is using our aural sensitivity to refine our instrumental technique so that our playing becomes as beautiful as possible. So when we play something, we might work just to refine the sound. Do we want exactly this sound? Was everything, was every note perfectly together? Do we want to emphasize a certain note? So we can actually use our ears. So this is a type of ear training that helps us to refine our sensitivity in our instrumental technique. A further stage of oral skills development is the ability to recognize the notes that we hear. We can learn to hear notes within the scale. So let's take C major, for example. Here are the scale degrees. From There are seven unique notes. And then C repeats again. And if I play that first note of the scale, this is the, the tonic. So in most music, it's usually quite easy to hear the tonic. This is the main note of the piece. And most people in our culture are able to do this without any special musical training. From there, we can learn to recognize other notes of the scale. So for example, we can recognize this as the fifth note of the scale, in other words, the dominant. Major and minor scales have seven notes, so this is a manageable task. From there, we can learn to recognize intervals, and then chords. and then eventually chord progressions. Audiation is the name given to the ability to hear music in your mind. When combined with reading skills, you can learn to hear written music in your mind's ear. The final stage is applied ear training, which is the ability to play what we hear. Our first ear training task as musicians is to learn to hear ourselves. This may seem trivial, but there's typically such a wide gap between how we think we sound and how we actually sound that it typically takes years of working with a skilled teacher before we develop an accurate idea of how we actually sound. The goal of this aspect of ear training is to be able to hear ourselves as we really sound, almost as though we were sitting in the audience listening to ourselves play. 
This aspect of ear training is one of the most difficult tasks for developing musicians. It really could take many years to synthesize your inner conceptions with the sounds that you're actually producing. It definitely took years and a lot of patient teaching for me. Until we're advanced musicians, the sounds we think we're making probably aren't the ones other people are actually hearing. At the piano, it's so easy to make basic mistakes, such as overpowering the melody with the accompaniment. Or not projecting the melody. Instead of... Or not taking time when we think we're actually doing so. Carefully listening to every note we play, even if we're just practicing technical exercises, helps since active listening is a crucial component of a good instrumental technique. And nowadays, musicians have a technological advantage compared to earlier generations of musicians. The ability to record ourselves is ubiquitous. In fact, you could probably record your playing using the device that you're viewing this video on right now. As you progress and refine your ear, you can upgrade your recording setup, but you can improve your ear significantly just using whatever you already have. Record yourself, then describe how you thought you sounded, and then play it back and listen. You may be surprised by how you actually sound. Continued practice with careful listening as you play, as well as carefully listening back to your recordings, will gradually close the gap between how you think you sound and how you really sound. Recording yourself in practice can also help you to refine your instrumental technique so that you can learn to make beautiful sounds. This is the second stage of ear training. By taking advantage of the technology in your pocket, you can work on the first two stages of ear training at the same time. The next stage of ear training is recognizing what we're hearing, just as we recognize objects that we see. As a listener, it's not necessary to recognize with scientific precision every single thing that you hear. Extremely few people, not named Mozart, are able to do that. It is, however, important for us musicians to understand the compositional material of every piece that we play, just as actors need to understand the nuances of language. There's meaning to the notes, and our job is to communicate that meaning. To do so, we do need to understand basic musical building blocks, such as common chords, whenever we hear them. Playing music without this essential ear training would be similar to trying to speak a foreign language without understanding the words. You could learn, let's say, Mandarin by rote just by imitating the sounds, but at the end of the day, you'll want to know what those sounds actually mean. It's similar for music. It's possible to learn how to press the right keys in the right order just by repetition, but if you don't understand the actual words, in this case, the notes, the intervals, the harmonies, then you won't be able to get out the meaning of the music. Your fingers will be learning, but your ears aren't fully guiding your fingers. And all too often this leads to both an insecure performance and a suboptimal interpretation. Relying on motor memory at the expense of oral skills is an easy learning mistake to make. I've certainly made this mistake. I try to learn intricate music such as fugues this way only to experience performance anxiety and fearing that memory slips are waiting around every single corner. If you're in the habit of practicing like this with really relying on your fingers, on motor memory, then it's time to incorporate ear training into your daily practice. Whenever you practice with a disengaged ear, you'll end up re reinforcing the very habit that you're trying to break. So start today to build the critical ear to finger connection. The ideal is to learn to hear with your eyes and see with your ears. Ideally, your, your fingers should be guided to the right keys by your inner ear. We shouldn't hear because we play, Rather, we play because we hear. In other words, we don't hear a note simply because we happen to have struck the right key. Instead, we strike the right key because we hear that right note in our mind's ear. And this is the essence of getting the mind ahead of the fingers. And this is the ultimate goal of ear training. The first aspect of this goal is technical. Your inner sound concept always needs to direct your fingers, and this is the aim of technique. The second aspect deals with pitch and harmony. Ideally, your understanding of harmony should become so ingrained that your ear seemingly automatically tells your fingers which notes to play. A simple test to see whether you're learning primarily with your ears or merely with your fingers is to transpose your music. This means to play it in the wrong key and do so without the aid of the score. Obviously, extremely technically difficult pieces, such as A2s, don't really lend themselves to this sort of ear training, but slower pieces do. 
And it turns out it's the slower pieces that tend to give us memory trouble since we're not really able to play them on autopilot in the same way that we could play fast pieces. So in other words, our motor memory readily takes over for faster pieces than it does for slower ones. It's also best to use practice pieces rather than performance pieces for transposing, at least in the beginning. Bella Bartok's Microcosmos is absolutely ideal for this work, especially since it's so full of surprises. When working with this material, it's essential to stay very alert for unexpected notes. You can't simply play notes within a conventional scale or a chord. Another simple but powerful method of ear training is to sing each voice in all the pieces that you play. This is an especially useful method of testing whether you're, you're really hearing every note. In most cases, students tend to hear the melody and the bass, but then they tend to have just a vague impression of the, these essential middle voices and hence the piece as a whole. This will account for much of the high degree of uncertainty and difficulty memorizing and, and also performance anxiety. So sing each and every note without the aid of the piano, making sure that you're staying absolutely on pitch. The piano is used just to give you a starting note and then to periodically check your pitch. This may be tedious at first, but this method of basic ear training will ensure that you're truly hearing every single note that you play, and it will give you far more security so that you can concentrate not just on playing the right notes, but really on expressing the music. If you're using music such as Microcosmos, be certain that you don't cheat and just end up sight reading new pieces at the piano. All the ear training value hidden in the many unexpected melodic turns is lost forever the moment you press the keys to hear the right pitch. Instead, make the effort to try to hear the, the next note in your mind before actually playing it. So remember, this is really the habit that we're tr trying to correct, and the goal is to create an accurate inner musical impression rather than just rely on external auditory feedback, in other words, playing the notes. With practice, you too can develop the skill of inner hearing. Good luck.